All right. Welcome back, Jordan. This is our first morning podcast because we are just having to work this in around everybody's schedules. Oh my gosh. I feel it. I feel it. You can see my voice even cracking. I have my I forced Connor to let me uh, make coffee before we started because I was so tired. So, but here we are. Here we are. I feel like I'm always yep. tired, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. Whether it's morning or night, about the afternoon is the only time that I feel like I've got energy. And even then, I don't know about that. <sighs> yeah, it's it gets it gets a little rough, but there is a lot of exciting news. We're doing a nice, quick, to the point news corner today. Yep. From what I know, right, Connor? Yep. Right. That is correct. Great. And we want to provide some of the updates on what's going on with the Roe v. Wade case uh, since the leaks that happened last Monday night, I believe. So we're yeah, looking at seven no. days, seven days since then, and as expected. We've already had uh, the Supreme Court justices. They've already been doxxed, uh, mapping everything of their houses uh, and where mm-hmm. to go. There's already been protests. I think there were some on Sunday night um, at Brett Kavanaugh's, and then there were more last night at Justice Alito's house. Um, yeah. So we've got we got a couple articles pulled up from New York Post and a few others that have kind of covering this, and I've got a few select uh, points taken out of those articles just to summarize what the big news is coming out since this has started. Um, So on May 5th, New York Post reported that militant pro-choice activists had doxxed the six Supreme Court justices that are expected to dismiss Roe v. Wade, and they published their partial addresses online as part of a planned protest. At least one activist group is already planning a more direct attack, taking the protest direct to the homes of the six justices expected to dismiss the long, divisive federal right. Now, again, like I mentioned, they even included a map pinpointing the homes, three in Virginia and three in Maryland, uh, where they say that the six Christian fundamentalist justices issue their shadow docket rulings. Um, I, I'm not sure. I think that might actually be a quote straight from one of the activist groups. Um, but yeah, they're they're going after Samuel Alito, Clarence Thomas, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Barrett, and Chief Justice John Roberts. So now that comes yeah. into a bit of a problem here. And I think I actually like the Tim cast article on it best. They have a article showing all the different protests uh, that have happened, um, particularly the ones a lot in front of uh, justice Alito's house. And that was last night. Um, but reading from here there, they say the lights were on outside justice Alito's home, though there have been unconfirmed rumors that he and his family have been moved to an undisclosed location for their safety. While it's possible they may have moved, it appears to have been a Twitter rumor that spread out of control and made it into the media. So nobody can confirm if these people have been, if them and their families have been moved. There's definitely a high chance that there's extra security at this point. Um, Well, I mean, it just, it just makes sense though, that, you know, with, with something like this, this is within the left's character um, to, you know, have these kind of protests to be violent. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw that with we saw that with 2020. Um, so even if you know, even if it is a rumor, it would not surprise me in the least if they were moved or if they were given extra security um, just because of what's happened. And we know what the left is capable of. Um, and they're trying to tell people what they're capable of. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm using like the far left very purposefully. Um, I think we've had, um, I did see an article where there were pro-life centers that were under attack. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's a hoax by the right. The right doesn't play these kind of hoax. Um, that's just not how they do it. Um, I think one of the things that was spray painted on one of the walls is if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. Um, That feels very threatening. Um, And I'm looking at some of the pictures um, and I don't know why a pregnancy center would do this to themselves, Um, but it's, it's pretty unfortunate what's happening here and the media doesn't really want to cover it. It looks like from some of those pictures off the Daily Wire link that you sent over, uh, show Molotovs uh, that were thrown at the building. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it doesn't look like it's caught fire. Um, 
though there's other part or there's other pictures of their offices being ransacked. So uh, yeah. as far as the justices are concerned, I don't think anybody's been arrested. I don't think anything has been violent yet, which is good. That being said, um, Tim Kest and uh, New York Post had reported that uh, attorneys that specialize in First Amendment told Tim Kest uh, that they believe the protests are in violation of 18 U.S.C. Um, 1507, which prohibits pickets or parades in or near a building housing a court of the United States or in a near or in or near a building or residence occupied by or used by such judge, juror, witness, or court officer. Um, they are prohibited when done with the intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impeding administration of justice. So it's highly likely that what they're doing could be considered illegal, um, though an attorney noted that if there's a loophole, it's the big one, which is the First Amendment. However, there mm -hmm. do seem to be restrictions on what type of combination you can have between what you're saying, what you're doing, where you're doing it, when you're doing it. And these ones would seem right. to be in violation of that. But as so far, there hasn't been any arrests, and it would only be a misdemeanor of jail up to like a year. Yeah. Well, he, well. Here's what's here's what's not in our news docket, which th this non news is big news. The mm -hmm. non news is that we still don't know who leaked this purposefully. No. We should have known by now. Um, and I think they might know. This is just an opinion. I think they might know, but they're not. They're not willing to tell. Um, and so that to me is deeply concerning um, as well. Um, I don't for sure, but stuff's been getting leaked for years now, and nobody's been able to pin down who does it, and then, or if they do, then nothing happens. I mean, we saw that all through Trump's presidency, and uh, not so much through Biden's. Um, at least, not any major leaks. Not that I, not that I can recall. Sure, Trump, this Trump, one is Trump made a lot of enemies, though, on his side and on. He did. His, yeah, he did. He was a polarizing figure, but this one is different because it's so tight knit. Yeah. that the pool is incredibly small. So there's no reason why they shouldn't have something to, you know, digitally connect someone to something here. I, out of all the spying that the FBI has done on the public, I, I don't know how they can't. <laughs> yeah. I just suddenly they're like, Oh, what, how do we find this? We don't know. Um, So I'm just, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little suspicious about that. Um, but yeah, the thing, the thing is talking about these people outside of these houses, out of these judges' houses protesting. Um, I think people don't understand how the court works, um, ex and these conservative judges, you know, they are meant to not be swayed by public opinion. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go up to Supreme Court or like uh, justices' homes. And be like, well, if I just use my own public influence, that should change their mind. Um, that's really just not how they work, um, especially more conservative judges. So if anything, I don't think that this is going to particularly help. I think that it's going to make them even more stubborn because they, if, if any of them bent on this because of public opinion or because of public intimidation, I think that they would honestly be pretty ashamed because ex specifically conservative judges, um, because they hold, most of them hold pretty close to the constitution for the most part, not all of them. Roberts is kind of, you know, um, but most of them would. What I would say though, as well, in defending these, these justices I would feel the same way if conservatives went after liberal judges. Um, it would be a far less likely situation, but I don't think any judge, like to to protect the integrity of the court and the integrity of these people's lives, I don't think it's ever appropriate for any judge on any spectrum of the political aisle for you to come after them. I, I'm against it all the way around. So that, they that's to, just my They need to be able it. to make their decision unadulterated, and this is certainly attempt uh when you have over 100 people protesting outside your house um especially with the last couple of years of known protests turned riots uh yeah. it certainly becomes a, a safety issue for for them and their families so 
hoping that they hoping and praying that they all stay safe um and i guess i guess the part that's odd to me that i don't see addressed very much is that yes this was leaked they've confirmed that much but it doesn't mean it's their final decision and it's not making all of abortion illegal and a lot of people seem to be acting like that on the federal level they're just going to change it to being legal when we know that this is going to push it back to the states now what the states do is totally up to the states and uh louisiana apparently has a uh, a bill classifying abortion as homicide that they're pushing through as of now like they're saying they can't wait they're not going to wait on the justices so i'm really interested to see how that one turns out and that vote was a seven two to approve the bill um seven to two yeah um, people i think people are just very when you're when all your arguments are emotionally driven your response is going to be emotionally driven um and in this case it's a little scary because it becomes kind of violent um we do have an article from the washington post um that says essentially that and this comes as no surprise but they're still in favor of overturning roe roe v wade um so that should be of no that should be of really no surprise they're not i don't think they're really going to end up moving on it um but you are right in the sense that you know this is pushed back to the states and by pushing it back to the states what people have to remember is that it's pushing it back to the people Mm-hmm. And if you don't like what your state is doing, you go to a different state. And that's why we're going to see blue states get bluer and red states get redder. Uh, I think in the long long term, you know, this is a better solution than the court deciding on whether or not on a federal level abortion uh, is OK. But I think what is the most um what is the most um, egregious to me is that these people are so dead set on having this right. And I understand that they've really been brainwashed and they really think that it's a right. I think more about these millennials because Roe v. Wade's been around for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. So millennials are in their 20s to 30s. So they've always had this and they have been told and grown up in the indoctrination that abortion is okay, that it's your right, it's your health care, it's all these things. So I can understand why they would feel that way. I can I can get it. Um, mm-hmm. I can't get I can't get the violence, but I can understand it. But there's a lot of pro-lifers that are are really it always comes back to the kid that's in the womb. It always comes back to that kid. Like, that's my answer. That's my question to anything is like, okay, what about the kid? You know, like, do you understand what abortion actually is? They hide behind these euphemisms of its health care. Okay, what does that mean? Um, do you know what abortion is? Do you know how it happens? And I don't think most of them could say what. I even think pro-lifers are not 100% aware of what happens with abortion. I think it's getting better. Um where I think there's been a lot of good organizations that have done a really good job at mm-hmm. letting people know what types of abortion are out there. Um, it's kind of my little my little spiel. Uh, another note too is um, I think I think that I don't think that this is going to help Democrats in the midterms. Uh, or in primary elections, I think that this is probably going to make it worse because I think pro-life people are very pro-life. Um, I think that there's, they've seen some polls that for the midterms, like, I I have to look up the source for this. So I'm not saying it's 100% accurate, what I'm about to say. But they said, like, Republican, like, young voters for midterms went up, like, 6% since this mm. happened, um, which is pretty interesting. So I think this leak is actually going to work in favor for the Republicans, um, which I could see a logical argument for that happening. Yeah, I could, I, I could see it just being another record turnout. Basically we saw a record turnout for, for Trump versus Biden. They both had record votes. Uh, both of them, both of them broke through that ceiling. Uh, obviously Trump's wasn't as much of a break, but 
uh, with them reacting so harshly to something that they believe is an inherent right for their medical freedom and their body autonomy, I could easily see that garnering more of a push for more democratic uh, leaders and, and bringing them back out to vote. So uh, I see your argument. I, I see the way that they react and I see the way that the left reacts to this. I, I think it'll probably be a midterm record turnout as the, the two sides tend to clash against each other. And like you, I can, I can sympathize to some extent what it is that they've been led to believe. They've been led to believe that, you know, this is infringing on, what you can and can't do with your body. And I don't want the government telling me what I can do with my body or you with yours. Um, But just what always falls apart in the arguments for me is that they just, they don't talk about the body of the baby. That is just absolutely uh, destroyed uh, when it comes to abortion, whether, uh, well, I don't know that we want to get into the different ways that they get torn apart or brought out piece by piece, but it's like, it's an abhorrent practice. And, they've been fed this lie. I mean, I've, I've been uh, hit with it since as, I mean, as long as I can remember is that it's not really a person. It's just a clump of cells. So as long as they believe that lie, then abortion doesn't, doesn't matter to them. It can't matter to them. It, it, but there's even to some of the more extreme ones that say they don't care. It's their body that has to house the baby and the baby's, you know, basically a parasite to them in society because it, can't take care of itself and it can't contribute to society and for me it's not that far of a jump from that to uh what is xenocide getting rid of all the elderly people like they've lived out their their usefulness they're a burden on society and their families and they're just using up resources that other people could use so like what's what's the argument there to keep you from from getting rid of elderly people that can no longer take care of themselves or from uh anybody that is uh, I mean, just physically disabled. I mean, there's so many other categories of people who they, I mean, then that's kind of what sets civilization people apart from animals is that largely if you're an animal and you're like, you're the first one to, to get eaten, to be left out of the pack, to get killed by um, your own pack, even because you become a danger to them. But that's not the way people have worked. People are obviously capable of horrendous things, but they're also capable of some of the greatest things and taking care of those that are elderly or who can't do things for themselves has been a staple of humanity for years. Um, so for me, it's like, yeah. I understand what they're upset about because they've been fed this narrative, this lie for decades, half a century at this point. Um, and yeah, for for millennials, it's pretty much our entire lives. That's that's what we face. Yeah, and I think that you know, if the media, if it has its euphemisms, that that's all they've ever heard, and that the truth. I think if they knew the truth, I don't think they would be pro-choice. Uh, but the left has done such a good job hiding that that. Mm-hmm. Um, they just they and they don't want to look at the truth because I think deep down they understand, but there's so much cognitive dissonance with it that they just can't they just can't get there. Um, and again, I think some of it does come down to pure selfishness. I think that we have created a society as a whole that's like I want everyone to serve me. I want everyone to do these things for me. I want to make bad choices and I want people to be okay with it. Um, I want reality to bend towards me. And so this is an outgrowth of that. Um, I think even electing Biden is an outgrowth of that, that they want someone to take care of them. they want government to take care of them. We have breeded this kind of um, we've breeded this kind of of people, and we can blame previous generations for that. Actually, um, as much as other generations want to separate themselves, but like, oh, we don't have anything to do with that. It's like, well, you raised them, so what say you? You know, like, where are the values that you've instilled in them? And if we continue down this path. I think what we're going to end up seeing, it's like you said, 
that's why it's such a slippery slope. You know, if you define, um, if you protect, if you're protecting abortion because, well, they're a parasite or they're not useful or they're not viable, meaning they can't take care of themselves. Okay, that's that's elderly people too. Um, you know, that's disabled people as well. Uh, it's a slippery slope. We even see in past, I think they passed a bill um, that you can, I think you can allow a child to die or kill a child if they survive abortion. Um, so infanticide. Now we're okay with infanticide. Okay, so these are it's getting more and more extreme, and that's why if you don't protect life at conception, you can't protect life at all. The most extreme pro-life position is to protect everyone, unborn and born, because once you move. Um, morally on the issue, you're going to find that that thought process bleeds itself into the mm. people that are outside the womb as well, which is why I'm so adamant about protecting it at conception, because it's really to protect me. Like, I think about that, like, you know, if when I'm 80, you know, if we're going to have moved so much as a society that I'm seen as a nuisance, and they're like, why don't we just get rid of Jordan? Why don't we just not take care of Jordan? Be and she doesn't contribute anything to society, which, by the way, you can contribute wisdom and other things to society because clearly we are missing quite a bit of it. I don't know. It really bothers me. But I do agree with you. Um, I do like to try to get into the head of people that think these kind of things and not just call them idiots or stupid people. I think some, some of them are genuinely not the brightest. I think that's a fair point to say. Not all of them are super bright, but not all of them are are very dumb either there's plenty of very intelligent people that are pro-choice um mm -hmm. and so it's i i don't really like the idea of calling them idiots but the ones that are yelling and screaming and being stupid yeah, yeah maybe i'd be like okay i don't think you're the you're the brightest bulb in the pack but whatever um speaking of babies one thing i didn't you're gonna hate me, Connor. I didn't put it in the sheet, <laughs> um, but you can look this up anywhere you Google. I've been aware of this for a couple of weeks now um, that there is a nationwide baby formula shortage. Um, this is a really big deal. This is a very, very, very big deal, especially for a child that is dependent upon formula and you mm -hmm. can't find formula. Um, and a lot of this, thanks Biden. Um, so when it comes to the idea of what issues are going to get people out there to vote it's going to be the issues that are directly affecting them so not being able to find baby formula supposed to getting an abortion like baby formula is a big deal like you want to be able to take care of your child um these are issues that are directly affecting us so i don't know how many americans from what i know at least actually like it's pretty split issue when it comes to abortion like everyone's not as pro-choice as the media would lead you to believe that they are. Um, but there is a baby formula shortage and a lot of parents, um, they're, they're really worried about this and rightfully so. Yeah. I was pulled up a uh, New York times a day ago. Uh, baby formula nationwide shortage is getting worse. Uh, voluntary recalls from popular formulas, retailers have limited purchases, and that's leaving desperate parents searching for solutions. Of course, I can't see the rest of it because New York Times always wants a subscription and I'm not giving it to them. Um, but just having that reported just a day ago, and it looks like healthychildren.org reports uh, as of late last night, basically some alternatives for, for, what, people, for what parents are able to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little scary there. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, you know, got to think about the big, got to think about the issues that impact people directly. Mm -hmm. um, I think something conservatives are really going to have to focus on should this be overturned, and they should be focusing on it anyways. But especially if this gets overturned, is going to be a, a complete remake of the adoption uh, process in this country. There's yeah, and I not a single family I know of that's gone through adoption that said, yeah, it was really great, really easy. No, it was horrible. It took years. It cost thousands of dollars uh, is usually the story that we get. Um, but for the for the kids that, I mean, I mean, it's been presented in arguments where it's like, look, if you don't want to have the baby, give them up for adoption. 
that that avenue needs to be provided to stable, loving families. Um, and there are some quite a bit of horror stories that come out of uh, adoption adoption process. So that's that's something that I think the conservatives will need to work into a package deal is take care take care of the take care of the unborn keep taking care of them as they get through it because it's clear that a lot of people have bought into this idea that they can't support a kid they don't want to support a kid um and you know another you know multiple lists of reasons especially you know if somebody conceived the baby in rape i can understand why they may not want to keep the kid i don't think that justifies killing the baby um but that we do need to create more robust options uh, and make it, it, it's hard to say, like make it easier, but also be able to vet people better for, uh, for adoptions. Um, but yeah. it's something you have that to know we some just have to figure out. Well, some of that's on the government level too, where I'm sure that I, I don't have any doubts in my brain that some of these big, um, that these, these bigger pro-life organizations are aware of some of the difficulty of this and are working very hard at it behind the scenes. I'm sure they they kind of feel the restraints as well. I was talking to a pro-life organization like a month ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they are, again, these are the things that people don't see behind the scenes, but she's like, yeah, we being on what, what do we look like in a, you know, post Roe v. Wade society. Uh, and so they are building, they are building those resources. They are working on those things. Um, and I think it's just something that's going to take time. Some of it might be out of their control when it comes to how adoption happens. Um, but you're right. I think it should. It needs I think to be that less it in the background. Easier. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs to, to be brought ex- to the forefront for people. To a certain extent, you got to wonder, you know, why the media doesn't talk about adoption. A ton. Um, again, some of it I think could be just a play on how the media is doing it. I'm not fully defending pro-life organizations. I'm just kind of giving both sides and saying that, hey, they are doing some stuff behind the scenes that just can't be seen yet. Or it's just it's just not at the forefront because it's stuff that's behind the scenes that you don't just put out there. Um, that's just how organizations work. That's how businesses work. I know that about businesses because I own one. Um, so you just kind of have to, I do agree with you. I'm just saying that mm-hmm. there's, it's a bit more complicated than, well, they just got to do this or they just got to do that. I'm sure that they've probably thought of that too. Like we'd want to do this, but then they see like a hundred different things that are in their way and having to slowly chip them off, you know, it's a right. process. I'm saying think, it needs to garner more public support on the surface and not be so behind yeah. the scenes anymore. Like abortion has largely, the only reason this is, this has come out at this point that we might actually be looking at the overturn of Roe v. Wade is because it was made such a public discourse. It took a long time, 50 years, mm-hmm. Uh, but we're finally there. I just don't want it to be another 50 years before adoption uh, gets brought to the forefront as well. That's that's my main point, is that it it can't be... It, it, more people need to get involved. It needs to become a more more of a hot topic um, and become an, mm-hmm. uh, a more known process. I mean, most people, if you, were to, if you were to ask most people, including myself, what does the process look like for adoption? Not a clue. Not a clue. You, you start with an adoption agency, and from that, I don't know. I, I've known people that it took them six years to adopt a kid that was local to the United States, not even like a kid from from Russia or China, but that's just what it took. So I imagine international adoption should be more complicated, but I guess that depends on the country it's coming from. Yeah, it's international adoption is just it's a whole mm-hmm. it's a whole different thing because you have to work with the country's requirements, um, getting a kid, I suppose. Um I would like to see in America, at least I've said this many times, I feel like, you know, we all want to adopt babies, which is good. We got to keep the adoption for babies up, right? Especially with Roe v. Wade, hopefully getting overturned. That's really good. Um, But, you know, can't forget about the older kids too um, that Mm -hmm. are in, that are in the foster care system. But I think that's, I think that's all the time we have for today. As far as I I think you are correct. It is time to head off to work. Uh, Jordan, it's been great catching up with you on this and these events. We will continue to monitor and post about them. I'm sure this won't be the last time that we talk about Roe v. Wade in the coming months. Uh, We will see you guys.
guys next week during the next podcast.